Hello class, welcome to this another discussion video. Our topic for this video is about impairment of asset. So we'll try to identify the similarities and differences of accounting for impairment of an asset across the three frameworks. So we have the full PFRS, the PFRS for SMEs, and the PFRS for small entities. So let us go first to the scope of this standard or sections. So basically, across the three frameworks, it's saying the same thing in terms of scope. That uh, the objective of this particular standard or section is to ensure no, that assets will not be carried at more than their recoverable amount. So if ever that the carrying amount of your asset is more than the carrying amount of your asset, then meaning there is a need for us to um, recognize impairment. So sa SME naman siya small entity, actually it's the same thing. No? So dapat lang daw na mag-recognize tayo ng impairment if the carrying amount of an asset exceeds the recoverable amount. Because as I've said, um, and similar to the full PFRS, if ever the carrying amount of an asset is greater than the, uh, the recoverable amount, it means that that carrying amount should be measured no? or should be adjusted to conform to the recoverable amount. So therefore, the difference will be considered as impairment loss. So let us proceed now to the recognition and measurement. So for the recognition and measurement, it's the same thing. Now, when do we recognize impairment? So if there is impairment loss to be recognized whenever no, the recoverable amount is below the clearing amount. So as you can see here, it's actually the same. Now, when we talk about how do we measure how do we measure impairment across the three frameworks, it's basically the same. So as you can see here, um, this statements here are applicable to full PFRS and SMEs. Whereas dito, uh, this is applicable for small, uh, small entities. So if we're going to compare yung impairment loss na define no, ng full PFRS ng SME is actually the same lang with the small entity. Now, so under small entity kasi, the impairment loss daw shall be recognized if the recoverable amount of an asset is less than the carrying amount. So basically, it's the same thing which is being described under the full PFRS and um, PFRS for SME. So parehos lang in terms of measurement no? ang tatlong frameworks. So saan ba sila nagkakaiba or nagkaiba? No? So you have to take note here that under the full PFRS and SME, no, um, ang impairment loss natin ay i-recognize natin as an expense in the statement of profit or loss unless it relates to a revalued asset. So take note, kasi di ba under sa full PFRS at uh, SME, allowed naman yung a revaluation model. Like, for example, when you talk about PPE or intangible assets, diba, they have um, the option either to measure subsequently their PPE or intangible asset at cost model or following the revaluation model. So with that, dito sa full PFR at SME, there is a possibility na uh, baka, yung, no, baka yung asset na um, na-impair no, or yung asset na previously na-revalue ay nag-reduce ang kanyang recoverable amount as compared to carrying amount. So if that's the case, then yung na-recognize natin na, na difference between the recoverable amount and the carrying amount ay hindi natin agad i-report as um, impairment loss doon sa profit or loss na statement. So, anong gagawin? No? Kapag revalued asset, no? so yung assets na dumaan na ng revaluation, the impairment loss is treated muna as a revaluation decrease. So, anong pagkakaiba ba no, ng, um, yung i-report mo agad sa profit or loss 
or yung i-consider mo siya as a revaluation decrease. Kasi, kasi class, pag revaluation decrease, no, yung na-compute mong impairment loss, hindi agad mapupunta doon sa profit or loss. So what you will do first is to charge it first to your revaluation surplus kung meron ka pang balance na revaluation surplus mo. Yung revaluation surplus mo is actually a consequence of your um, previous revaluation. So, nag-increase ang value ng asset. So, yun, nag-credit ka ng revaluation surplus. So, this time naman, bumaba na yung recoverable am- ng asset compared to its carrying amount. So, parang nag-decrease siya. So, yun na nga. Yung decrease na yun, wag mo agad i-recognize as impairment loss. Charge mo muna sa remaining revaluation surplus And yung sobra na lang na if hindi pag hindi kakasya no if hindi enough yung revaluation surplus siyan ka pa magre-report ng impairment loss which will be of course presented in your profit or loss statement. So yun yung treatment no under full PFRS tsaka SME. So depende kung na-revalue ba ang asset before or hindi. Kasi for the first time nag-decrease ang value of course lahat yun. Uh, you have to report that immediately as impairment loss. But it's a different story if yung asset na nag-decrease ang value ay dumaan na ng revaluation before. No? Nag-recognize ka na ng revaluation surplus. What about small entities? No? So ano naman ang dito sa small entity? So if you can still recall, di ba itong small entities, bawal tayo mag-report ng revaluation surplus as part of our other comprehensive income. Kasi nga, under small entities, walang OCI na i recognize So, hindi tayo allowed na mag-recognize ng OCI. So, what will happen is that under the small entity class, pag, pag meron tayong na-compute, no, na impairment loss, so that happens when, again, the recoverable amount is less than the clearing amount. So, pag may impairment loss ka na na-compute under dito sa small entities, lahat ng yun, i-report mo na in your profit or loss. Again, considering, wala naman tayong asset na dumaan ng revaluation kasi nga bawal no under the uh, PFRS for small entities. Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-recognize ng revaluation surplus. So based on that premise, yun yung pagkakaiba no, ng full PFRS SME versus the small entity. Kasi the same ang treatment ng full PFRS at ng SME. Kasi pwede naman sila, no? Both of these frameworks would allow um, entities to just recognize or no recognize subsequently the assets using cost model or revaluation model. So unlike sa small entities na cost model lang talaga ang allowed sa kanila na subsequent measurement. Okay, now um, let us try to call no a review. Ano bang i-consider natin na recoverable amount? Kasi diba sabi natin, um, yung impairment loss will be recognized if the recoverable amount is lower than the clearing amount. So, I suppose, alam natin kung ano yung clearing amount. Diba? If you're referring to uh, property, plant, and equipment, then that is our net book value. So, yung acquisition cost minus our um, accumulated depreciation and Ganun, no? you have your carrying amount. Now, for the recoverable amount naman, actually, this is true to all frameworks. No? The same lang sila class, the same ang recoverable amount. No? The, the recoverable amount referred to the three frameworks are actually the same. So, pag sinabing recoverable amount, it's the higher amount between the fair value less cost of disposal and the value in use. So, dalawa yung ating... Um, amounts na i-compare. So kung saan ang mas mataas no or mas malaki yung amount, yun yung i-consider natin as recoverable amount. So let's try to review ano nga ba yung fair value less cost of disposal. So it's the amount obtainable from the sale of an asset in an arm's length transaction between knowledgeable willing parties less the cost of disposal. Or in other words, ito yung sinasabi nating net selling price of the asset. How much are you going to um, realize out of selling such asset? Of course, net already of the um, cost to sell no? or the cost of disposing that asset. Okay? So that's your fair value less cost of disposal. Now, your value in use 
is actually the present value of the estimated future cash flows expected to be derived from an asset or the cash generating unit. So yung cash generating unit meaning is a group of assets, di ba? Which can um, generate cash for the entity. So it could be like for example one line segment, no? Ganun. Kasi you have also to assess, di ba? If that particular cash generating unit is impaired or not. Um, if I if we may uh, review no your previous na mga lesson sa ACC to one one di ba um we can impair an asset individually or as a cash or as as an item no one of the assets in a cash generating unit okay so also this one yung mga indicators of impairment is just the same across the uh, three frameworks no so we have the same um indicators no na pwede nating pagbasihan kung kailan tayo makakapagsabi na um uh, it's possible that our asset has been impaired no so you have here uh, we have two actually sources now you have the external sources and the internal sources so pag sinabing external sources ito yung mga possible indicators na impaired yung asset natin so if there's a significant decline in the market value of the asset so we can say that no that asset is impaired so if there's an indication so what we have to do is you test na if indeed um, mas maliit na ba yung recoverable amount compared sa um, ating carrying amount. Another is if there's significant change in the technological, market, legal, or economic environment of the business. So that's also one. Tapos pag may increase no, in the interest rate or market rate on the return of investment. Or if the carrying amount of the asset is more than the market capitalization. So ito yung mga... Uh, indicators of impairment na hindi natin control. No? So, wala tayong control dito. Um, kasi this is uh, parang ang drivers niya ay mga external, no? mga external factors siya. For the internal sources naman, uh, this could be the indicators no, of impairment. So, there could be obsolescence or physical damage no baka of course na damage yung asset mo because of when you're using it you're not very careful so may physical damage so it could be um, an indication of impairment kasi pag may, pag may physical damage of course um hindi mo na siya magagamit as intended or most probably of course your the value of that asset might decline also Another is significant change in the manner or, or extent in which the asset is used when an adverse effect on uh, with an adverse effect on the entity. So yun, may significant change tapos yung epekto sa entity is negative, no? So hindi maganda ang naging effect ng change na yun sa entity. And then the if um if there is an evidence that the economic performance will be worse than expected. So uh, if you can see, so if you have observed all of this or parang may negative impact no sa entity natin. So this is when we can say that there is an indication that the asset may be you know, impaired. So pag ganun, you have to test if indeed na-impair ba yung asset natin or hindi. So when do we test? You know, what's the frequency of testing for impairment? So take note, depende class, no? um, depende if with finite life ba ang ating asset or with indefinite life ba? So, we don't have problems with SME at small entities kasi lahat ng assets, no, even intangible assets, are presumed, presumed to have um, finite no, or definite na, mga, na life, na useful life. So, with that, pag ang asset no, has a finite life, you have to test it for impairment when there is an indication that the asset may be impaired. So, doon mo lang siya test for impairment. No, kasi nga, di ba, yung mga assets na may finite na life, you are going to depreciate them or to amortize them no, in the case of intangible assets. So, therefore, um, ang gagawin mo na lang, pag yung mga um, na-discuss natin na mga internal or external factors or indicators of impairment are present no, in the circumstances of your asset, so therefore, you have to um, test you know, whether your 
asset is impaired or not. So, check mo magkano yung recoverable amount against the carrying amount. Kasi pag mas maliit ang carrying am- um, recoverable amount, then most probably you have to recognize impairment. Now, if your assets naman no, has indefinite life, so as what we have learned in the intangible asset, no, this is only applicable for full PFRS kasi only in full PFRS na nag allow tayo na indefinite no, yung life ng ating um, intangible asset. So with that, we're going to test it for impairment. Take note annually. And when there is an indication that the asset may be impaired. So, mas stricto, no? Pag uh, indefinite ang life ng asset natin, you have to test it for impairment. Mas frequent siya. It should, it should be annual. No? Once a year, dapat nakapag-test for impairment ka. And also, of course, when there is an indication as to the asset, uh, as to the impairment of the asset. No? Unlike doon sa uh, may may ano may finite na life or may definite na life na magte-test ka lang for impairment if may indication so hindi necessary na um every year no under those assets na uh, with finite na life unlike doon sa indefinite that you really have to test for impairment every year and every time that there's indication that the asset may be impaired okay so that will be all for this um in impairment of asset topic. I hope you learned something from this discussion. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.